say Jesus. Now we do know Jay was not oh, even yeah, we in were, yeah, Jesus that. And you know, and we, and we know his real name for Jesus is what? And we all don't want to call it. I know it. Those are all titles. I don't care. Who Jesus, is the real name? Yeshua, Yahweh, yeah, I, I don't know, care. They don't know. care. But who, who is Jesus' real name? Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Uh, okay. Emmanuel. Those I, are titles. Those I, are not names. Those what are is the real name? Because I've studied it. Y'all don't know what. Those are titles. Give me that revelation. Okay, so the real name, because it's now in the Bible. The place. I ain't trying to go off. For the Jesus is Yahweh Shah. It's in the Bible. Now we have one guest joining us. Also is Aretha that's joining Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachaha Kurash. Double honors to the apostles, the bishops, and the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations, as always, to the elect. And in this lesson, we will be covering the name, all right, of our Lord and Savior, all right, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, all right, and his name is not just a title because the Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, all right, when we say Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, that means Yahweh Shai, as we'll show you the meaning of that name, all right, Ha is Hebrew for the, Mashiach is Hebrew for the Messiah, so Yahweh Shai, the Messiah, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. And as you can see, this lady here has more sense than these individuals who are in purple and supposed to be teachers and scholars. Now, as you can see, she's saying there is a definite name. And although she was off on the pronunciation, all right, she said Yahweh Shah. All right, the name is Yahweh Shai. She's closer than these individuals, and she's right because the Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach, has a name. And it's a damn shame that she's there and she has more sense, which I don't know who she is. Um, but either way it goes, these two individuals, as you see on the right, all right, or uh, one of them didn't know what to say. One of them said, well, his name's Emmanuel, which that is a title given unto him in prophecy. All right, I'm Nawala. All right, all right, our power, our God is with us. We'll, we'll go to that as well. Um, but the individual next to him is merely saying, uh, Jesus, Yahweh Shai, Yahushua, well, those are all titles. Well, when we go into the scriptures, when our Lord and Savior was born, he was given a name. See? And when he addressed Paul, we'll show you he used that same name. And we'll get into a few other things, and hopefully you brothers and sisters are edified, because that is the reason these lessons are done. Okay? Not for strife, for vainglory, but for the edification of the body. Because this is a mess. See? Now... To get into the scriptures, because there's a difference between a name and a title. This is Proverbs 30 and 4. Who hath ascended up to heaven or descended? Who have gathered the wind in his fist? Who have bound the waters in a garment? Who hath established all the ends of the earth? We know that's Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, and the Alahayim. Okay? What is his name? And what is his son's name, if you can tell? Every word of the Most High is pure. All right? And we find his name in the volume of the book. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. And for some reason, uh, this group IUIC has disdain for the name now. Let's go to the book of 1 John 5 and 9. It says, if we receive the witness of men... The witness of the Most High is greater, for this is the witness of the Most High, which he hath testified of his Son. Okay, and we find that witness in the volume of the book. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, 
because he believeth not the record that God gave of his son. Let's look up this word record. Let's look up this word record. The word record. Strong's G 3141 Marturia. Marturia. Okay. A testifying. And uh, the, the, the office committed to the prophets of testifying concerning future events, what one testifies, testimony before a judge. Now, what did Yahweh Shai say? He said, search the scriptures. Let's find that scripture. Because they testify of me. John 5 and 39. Search the scriptures for in them ye think ye have eternal life and they are they which testify of me. NLT, you search the scriptures because you think they give you eternal life, but the scriptures point to me. See? Yet you refuse to come to me to receive this life. All right? And this is what's happening with this group called the IUIC. All right? And we must note that the leader of this school at one point taught that the names of the Most High God, Yahweh, and his son, Yahweh Shai, all right, were exactly that. Okay, hardcore. There's a lesson of him teaching that on the internet, all right? Right now, you can look it up. The name of the Most High and uh, the Bishop Nathaniel is teaching it. But for some reason, you know, as he started this school called the IUIC, it comes out from members who left that they made an oath not to teach those names. And you've had particular individuals who were a part of IUIC. Um, when they left, they let, let it be known that it was a gag order on teaching those names. And when they left, a few of them started back calling on those names. Anyway, when you search the scriptures, they testify of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. Okay. Now, when you go to the word Jesus, all right. When you go to the word Jesus, or when you go to Yahweh Shai's birth, rather, okay, here in Matthew, as a matter of fact, we'll start at Luke, because the account here in Luke, see, the account here in Luke of the angel showing up to Mary, all right, that happened before the account in Matthew. So Luke 1 and 31, this is the angel speaking to Mary, the mother of the Messiah. Luke 1 and 31, And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. All right, now it says Jesus and people get all messed up, right? And we know that the angels speak Hebrew. We know that the Messiah himself, when he came to Paul, let's, let's read it real quick. In the Hebrew tongue, Just to give you some clarification on that, this is why you have to go line up on line and precept upon precept. This is the book of Acts 26 and 14. This is Paul's account of when Yahweh Shah came to him. Acts 26 and 14. And when we were falling down to the earth, I heard a voice speaking to me saying in the Hebrew tongue, all right, which the Messiah, his family, you know, these are Hebrews. Okay? So the, the Messiah is saying this in the Hebrew tongue. Okay? Jesus is not a Hebrew term. Jesus is merely a transliteration, all right, of the word Joshua. All right? It's not even a pure translation. And again, the, the letter J, as we'll show you, didn't even exist at this time. They wouldn't have been saying J. Okay, so this voice spoke to Paul in the Hebrew tongue saying, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And I said, who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am 
Yahweh Shai, whom thou persecuted. Now you see there the term Jesus, right? The term Jesus, right? But we know that he's speaking Hebrew here. So what is that Hebrew term? What is this Hebrew term, all right, that the angel would have told Mary here that his name was going to be called? Okay? And thou shalt behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, Luke 1 and 31, and shall bring forth a son, and shall call his name Yahawashai. He will be great, and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father, David. All right, now real quick. This is a question on Google. When did the letter J come into existence? 1524, the answer and explanation. Until the year 1524, there was no letter J in the alphabet. The letter J was originally the same as I. The father of the letter J is Gian Giorgio Tricion. Tricion Triciono. All right, Tricino. An Italian author and grammarian who lived from 1478 to 1550. So that's where you get your J. Okay? Does the letter J exist in Hebrew? There is no Hebrew letter that make the sound of a ch, as in Charlie or J, and W. All right? Those, are the, those were added, you know, points uh, that, that our, our Hebrew alphabet never dealt with. We don't have a J in the Hebrew, all right? And you can go deeper into that. But as you can see here, there is no J in the Hebrew letter. There was no J or J as an alphabet until 1524, and you can get more into that history. But right here, we see that it says Luke 1 and 31. This is an angel speaking to Mary. The angel would not have been speaking Greek to Mary. The angel would have been speaking Hebrew and as we can see, the Messiah himself said his name in Hebrew. But here it says Jesus. So we're going to break this down for those of you who don't uh, have that understanding because it can be tricky. You see that name, Jesus, but we see that also it's a Hebrew name that he was given as the Messiah himself came from a Hebrew speaking family. OK, and we're going to break it down now here. This is the angel foretelling what Mary was to name the child. Okay. Now in the very next chapter, it gives the birth of the Messiah and that's what he was named. This is the book of Luke 2 and 21. And when the eighth days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, his name was called Yahweh Shai. And I look, I got a little history on the naming of a child. Um, you know, sometimes it was on the eighth day that they named the child, you know, but, you know, we don't have to get into all of that. But here we see that when the eighth days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, which goes back to the law of Moses, right? His name was called Yahweh Shai, which was so named of the angel before he was conceived of the womb. He was named so this is not a title. This was his name given when he was born, just like we have John the Baptist's name. As a matter of fact, show you that real quick. We have the record of John the Baptist, okay, Luke 1 and 13. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias. For thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. So angels are giving names. See? And as you know, in our culture, we deal with omen nomens. Okay? Names were given, all right, as a foretelling of the purpose of these children. And John means grace through him. You know, baptizing our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, we have received grace, you know, transition of the uh, priesthood 
from Aaron over to our high priest, Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, as John the Baptist was from the lineage of Aaron. All right, but that's a whole nother lesson for a whole nother time. So through John baptizing Yahweh Shai, and through Yahweh Shai, we have grace. Okay? John named Yahachanan, uh, all right, Yahweh or Yah has graced. He has given us grace. So we see here, John's name is given. These are names. These are not titles. As we see here, Luke 2 and 21. This is the record. What we're reading is the record given, all right, by the Most High through the volume of the book of his son. And within the record, we see that when the eighth days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, his name was called it says Jesus, which is Yahweh Shai, which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. So before he was conceived in the womb, let's read this in the NLT. Eight days later, when the baby was circumcised, he was named. He was given a name. See? Name Yahweh Shai, the name given him by the angel even before he was conceived, meaning even before Joseph and Mary had laid together, all right, and that seed conceived in her womb, right? The angel said, this is going to be his name. This is not a title. Let's get an example of a title for the, for the Lord and Savior. Let's go to the book of Isaiah, as his birth was foretold in many scriptures. Let's go to Isaiah 9 and 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. So like, let's start over. Isaiah 9 and 6. For unto us a child is born, as it was always prophesied he was going to come, unto us a son is given, and he was going to come through the loins and lineage of David. And the government shall be on his shoulder, and his name shall be called, all right, Wonderful. Counselor, these are titles. Mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Okay? These are things that he would be called because there's a difference between a name and a title. Okay? The difference between a name and a title, generally a name refers to a specific thing, distinctive name, and a title refers to, uh, to a thing that fulfills a requirement or a role or descriptive name. So these, what we're reading now, are descriptive names or titles given to our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. See? His name shall be called Wonderful, the Counselor, the Mighty Power, the Everlasting Father, which in ancient Hebrew customs, all right, Eastern customs, to be a father of something, all right, meant to be you were great at it. He's like the, the father of righteousness. All right. And the, 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 the first fruit spirits chosen under him are also fathers. So, yes, he is the everlasting father. He is a father. OK, because under him comes what the, the, the elect. He's the head of the church. The prince of peace. OK, the prince of peace. Right. Of the increase of his government, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with, with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of Yahweh, the Lord of hosts, will perform this. So it's going to happen. And he did come. He was born. That's why Herod tried to have him put to death because he understood what this child represented. But this child had many titles. Another title given unto him is in Isaiah 7 and 14. Isaiah 7 and 14, therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign and behold a virgin, all right, a young woman of marriageable age whose name will be Mary. This is <laughs> years before, all right, the, the, the Roman captivity. This was in the Babylonian captivity. Okay, so, 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 Years way before 
his 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 uh actual birth. You see, he was prophesied to come. See, and Mary or Joseph and Mary were the vessels that were going to be used to bring this child about. So behold, a young woman, that's what that word virgin means, of marriageable age. All right, a, a llama. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and thou shalt call his name Emmanuel. Okay? Emmanuel, which, let's look that up. I'm na wa Allah. Okay? All right? Our power is with us. All right? Or with us is our power. Symbolic and prophetic name of the Messiah, the, 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 the anointed one, prophesying that he would be born of a young woman, all right, and would be God with us, all right? His coming meant God is with us, okay? That was a, a, a title, okay? His coming, all right, and his birth lets us know that God is with us, you see? And when you get uh, the book of Matthew 1, see if we can find that yep that Matthew 1 it goes into it Matthew 1 and 22 now all this was done that it might be fulfilled see as a matter of fact let's go to 21 let's just get to the point Matthew 1 and 21 and she shall bring forth a son and thou shalt call his name Yahweh Shai for he shall save his people from their sins. Now, when all this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord of the Lord, by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is interpreted being God is with us. All right. So when he was born, what name was he given? OK, well, we go to the record. Luke, the second chapter. That was just a title given unto him, I'm Nawala, all right, wonderful counselor, the prince of peace. He has many titles, but when it comes to his name, the name that he was given, the name that he was called by when he walked into the store, when he, when you seen him walking by, what would, what would you call him? Luke 2 and 21, and when the eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, his name was called. Yahweh Shai, this was what? Was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. So his name was given unto him. We have a record of him being given a name now. You see this term is Jesus. So let's go to the book of Acts. Okay. The uh, seventh chapter in the 45th verse. As Stephen is breaking down the history. All right. Of his people, the Hebrews, the Hebrew Israelites. That's another thing. This particular camp says we're not Hebrew. When Abram was called a Hebrew. The term Hebrew, not only is it a language, but it ties us back to a legacy that was continued, you see, through Abraham, which ties back to Adam, through through Seth, through uh Enoch, Methuselah, Noah, Shem, or Faxad, <laughs> all the way up. You see? And that was a legacy. The calling on the name of the Lord. You see? It was a legacy. So we are Hebrew Israelites. See? We are Hebrew Israelites. Because Abram was called what? A Hebrew Get that real quick. So what's up with this camp trying to detach us from Hebrew? Genesis 14 and 13. And there came one that had escaped and told Abram the Hebrew. See? Abram was called a Hebrew. Are not the, the scriptures tell us to look to our father Abraham. Right? This was that, uh, Isaiah 43. Yep, Isaiah 51 and 2. Look unto your father, 
Abraham and to Sarah that bear you, for I called him alone and blessed him and increased him. So we're of Abraham. We're of Abram, right? And he was a Hebrew. So we're Hebrews. You have a book called the book of Hebrews. So let's read this as he's going into the record of the Hebrews. Acts 7 and 44. Let's read it. We'll read it in the King James and in the NLT. This is Stephen, Acts 7 and 44. Our fathers had the tabernacle of witness in the wilderness as he had appointed, speaking unto Moses, that he should make it according to the fashion he had seen. All right, Moses made the tabernacle, okay? Which also our fathers that came after brought in with Jesus, uh-oh, and to the possession of the Gentiles who had the Holy Land, right? Whom God drave out before the face of our fathers into the days of David. So as he's going into this history, he's going into the history dealing with what? Joshua. But as you can see, Joshua and Jesus are the same name. So Acts 7 and 45 in the, in, in the NLT. Years later, when Joshua led our ancestors in battle against the nations that uh that drove out of this uh, that uh that God drove out of this land okay the tabernacle was taken with them into their new territory and it stayed there into the time of King David all right that's why he wanted to build a temple so he can put the tabernacle there but as you can see the the name Jesus is associated with Joshua Okay, and let's just look up this term, Jesus. <laughs> See there, Iosis, Eusis, okay? Jehovah is salvation, wrong. See? The, the, really, what, you're, what you'll find out is that this is just a transliteration. And as you can see here, it has the Hebrew origin, all right? Yahawa. Yahawashawai. They got it kind of right, but we'll show you that's wrong. And who does that tie you to? Joshua. So let's break down the name Joshua. First of all, what was his name? Let's go to the book of Numbers. Okay, so, so if you want to know the name of the Messiah, it would be the same name that Joshua had. See? See? Which, let's go into that name. Let's go into the history of Joshua. Let's go to Numbers 12. We know that Joshua was one of the men. I believe it's Numbers 12. Let's see. Numbers 11. People complain. 12 could be 13. Yep. Numbers 13. Salakia. Okay, and you can read up on the history of Joshua. We know that he was, you know, the one, you know, Caleb, Joshua, led us into the promised land. Now, there were 12 spies that were going to be sent to spy out the land of Canaan, which is our land, but heathen were there. And you have to understand, it was promised to Abraham that your seed would possess this land. But it didn't happen, all right? Until generations on down the line, here with uh, 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 Joshua, Moses, Caleb, and so forth. So this is fulfilling that promise that was promised unto Abraham, that his seed would basically possess this land, which it wasn't really fulfilled, and it's going to be fulfilled under Yahweh Shai fully. But here, okay, here, Numbers 13 and one, see the NLT, the Lord now said to Moses, send out men to explore the land of Canaan, that I am given the Israelites, send one leader from each of the 12 ancestral tribes, which vocab says that Caleb is an Edomite, okay? <laughs> oh, Lord, these people are crazy. So as we go through the names of the 12 spies that were going to be sent to spy out the land, Okay, of the tribe of Judah, you had Caleb. Okay, he's an ancestral Israelite of the tribe of Judah. 
All right, then you have one from the tribe of Issachar named Egal. All right, but of the tribe of Ephraim, okay, you had Oshea, the son of Nun, or Hosea, the son of Nun. This is Joshua, okay? And as you're going to see, Moses is going to change his name to Joshua, but here it's Oshea. Let's look up the word for Oshea. Ha was shy. Ha was shy. Hosea, Hosea, or Oshea, salvation. Family name of Joshua, the son of Nun. Okay? So here, Ha was shy. That's how you pronounce, all right, uh, uh, the name Joseph had before he was called Yah Ha was shy. Here it's Ha was shy, salvation. He was a like or type of a Messiah. All right. He's not Yahweh Shai in the reincarnation, but what he did during this time leading the children of Israel. All right. Into that promised land, he was likened unto a savior. And of these 12 spies, two had the right report. And that would be Caleb of Judah and Joshua of Ephraim, which is symbolic of Judah and Ephraim, which fulfill the house of David. All 12 tribes, Judah and Ephraim. You'll see that term, uh, uh, you know, spoken throughout the scriptures. That's a narrative, Judah and Ephraim, the reunion of Judah and Ephraim. When you go to Ezekiel 37, okay, Joshua and Caleb, all right, are symbolic of those of the elect who would have the right testimony. Because when you read the story, it was Joshua and Caleb who had the right report. And who pleased the Lord. Everybody else was scared. So as you keep going down. Verse 16. These are the names of the men. Which Moses sent to spy out the land. And Moses called Oshea. The son of Nun. Yah Hawashai. Moses called Hawashai. Yah Hawashai. He added the Yah. He. See? So, if you want to know the name of Yahweh Shai, it's the simplest doing this. Okay? Because the name Yahweh Shai is not a name that was never given. See? But it's a name that points that the Most High is letting us know that He, Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorant calls Jesus Christ, He would be the one that's going to save us. Right? He will save their, his people from their sins. So you have Hosea or Hosea, salvation, Hawashai. But his name was what? Changed, all right, to Yah Hawashai. Now you see the Yah character there. See? The Yah character, which this is the Assyrian Hebrew, but the, let's see if I can get it over there. Yeah, it ain't doing it. We go from right, okay, to left. So if you see this character, you see, but it's still wrong here. Yah, ha, wa, sha, why? See that wa before the I shouldn't be there. So as you read down, because we know his name in the Hebrew was just Hawashai. Hosea. It didn't have that wa, I at the end. It was just Hawashai. So here... If you keep reading and I'm going down, it'll give you the real name. It's right here. See where I have my, uh, the blue? You'll see it right there. Ha, wa, shy. Ha, wa, shy. Yahushua or ya, ha, wa, shy. They give you the real name right there. Ya, ha, wa, shy. Okay? And Moses changed his name to that. He put the Yah, he, as he was going to bring us into the promised land. Okay? Yah, ha, wa, shai is also right here. Okay? Yah, ha, wa, shai. So Moses changed his name to Yahweh Shai. So I have a little history from uh, John Gill. 
Numbers 13 and 16, these are the names of the men which were sent to spy out the land. All right, Numbers 13 and 4, and this was repeated that their names may be taken notice of, which stand out on record to the disgrace of the greater number of them, because 10 of them were scared, and to the honor of two only, Joshua and Caleb, of the former, the following remark is made. And Moses called Oshea or Hosea, the son of Nun, all right, or Hawashai, the son of Nun, Yahawashai, whether it was at the time, at this time that Moses gave him this name is not certain. If it was, then he called, he is called so before uh, by anticipation, for he is several times called so before this, and even the first time we hear him in Exodus 7 and 9, 17 and 9. All right, and Moses said to Yahawashai, choose us out men to go to fight with Amalek. So Moses had already called him that. But as you can see, it says Moses called him that. Moses is the one who basically put the Yah, all right, before the Hawashai. All right. Wherefore, Kaskuni reads it, all right. Moses had called, all right, but Jericho thinks it was now given to him that Moses uh, prayed for him, all right. Yaha or Jah or Jehovah saved thee from the council of the spies. The name is the same with Jesus. All right, as appears from Hebrews 4 and 8. All right, speaking of Joshua as a uh and a type, he was of anointed the Savior, whose name is called because he saves his people from their sins. Speaking of Yahweh Shai. All right, and here in Hebrews 4 and 8, for if Jesus had given them rest. Then he would not afterward have spoken of another day. That's speaking of Joshua. As a matter of fact, let's go to it in the uh, blue letter so you can see. When you're reading that in the uh, Hebrews, the fourth chapter, in the eighth verse. Let's see here. Well, what scripture is that? Give me one second. Okay. Boom. For if Jesus had given them rest, but we read it in NLT now, if Joshua had succeeded in giving them this rest, God would not have spoken about another day, all right, of rest still to come. So this was talking about Joshua. So Joshua, all right, and Yahweh Shai have the same name, and we just broke it down to you. We just broke it down to you, okay? That the, 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 the way to pronounce that name in the Hebrew is Yahweh Shai. You see? So when we when we deal with the name Yahweh Shai, that name was given to him because he was going to be the one that's going to what? Save us and deliver us from our sins, deliver us from our enemies to bring us back to the promised land. That's all going to happen under who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. Under that first covenant, our entering into that promised land, okay, was through joshua and caleb you see which was just a foreshadowing of what was going to happen under yahweh shai and again joshua is not yahweh shai in the reincarnation they just share the same name because their purpose was pretty much the same in bringing us into the land you see although it wasn't fully fulfilled we got a you know a portion of it under joshua all right it's going to fully be fulfilled under yahweh shai this is philippians 2 and 9 Wherefore God hath highly exalted him and given him a name, all right, which is above every name. You see? That at the name of Yahweh Shai, that was the name given unto him, as we showed you when he was born. Every knee should bow. So he has titles, which the titles, all right, let you know what he's going to do. All right, but he also has a name. See? which is tied to his rank, because when you look up this word name, as a matter of fact, we'll go into that in just a minute, that at the name of Yahweh Shai, every knee should bow, things in heaven, things in earth, things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach, is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So he has a name, and there's a name that every knee is going to bow to in, king, in the kingdom of heaven, the name of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai. 
Now, let's go back to this. Let's listen to this again. I say Jesus. Now, we do know Jay was not oh, even yeah, we, in yeah, Jesus, that. Jesus, sure, yeah, you know, and, we, and we know his real name for Jesus is what? And we all don't want to call it. I know it. Those are all titles. I don't care. Who Jesus, is the real name? Sure, yeah, sure. Those are all titles. We just showed you example of titles, which he has other titles. Okay, he has other titles. Okay, he has many titles, but what was the name? We just showed you he when he was born, he was given a name. See? And we know that this school was given a gag order on saying those names, teaching those names. Now, since being called out, you know, by the apostles and elders, and people wonder why this keeps coming up. People wonder why this is important. Well, if you don't think this is important, you think this is a something little, the wickedness that they're doing, they're, they're trying to take away, they're, they're telling our people they aren't Hebrew Israelites. Okay? Talks about the nation of Israel and God showing people being the Israelites. So we're just, we call ourselves just the Israelites. But we understand uh, people in the mainstream identify us as Hebrew Israelites, but that's a fallacy. And in, in, in terms of our organization, Israel United in Christ, that started in 2003 by um, Bishop Nathaniel, Bishop Kanai, and also Bishop Yawasab. And those brothers basically was the um, foundation of where we are today in terms of getting the message out to the world and to our people of keeping God's commandments, living a clean and righteous life, and most importantly, keeping God's commandments. I say Jesus. Now, we do know Jay was not oh, even yeah, we, in yeah, Jesus, that, I'm sure, yeah, I was you know, and we, and we know his real name for Jesus is what? And we all don't want to call it. I know it. Those are all titles. I don't care. Who Jesus. is the real name? She's saying, what is his name? All right. Well, she's out of order. I, you know, just looking at her, she seems to be out of order, but she's right. You know? What, 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 what are these dudes doing? What's going on here? But look at the guy to the far right. He don't know what the hell is going on. But this dude, he understands the agenda. We, we can't say Yahawashi is the name. So he's trying to throw them off as merely titles, which again, there's many titles of, of Yahawashi. As a matter of fact, what we'll do, let's just go here. Different titles. Let's see here. Different titles of Jesus. Of Jesus. Different titles of Jesus. Emmanuel, Son of God, Light of the World, Son of God. Messiah, Alpha, Omega, I Am, Bread of Life. King of the Jews, Son of David, Savior, Redeemer, Master, King of Kings, Beloved Son, Deliverer, Chief Cornerstone. These are all titles. See? But when he was born, we're showing we're telling you he was given a name. Sure, yeah, I, I, I don't, don't care, don't care. But who who is Jesus' real name? Yeah. Emmanuel. See, he said his real name was Emmanuel. Wrong. But that was a title given unto him, which would prove that God is with us because we needed a way back to the Father. I'm Nawala. Our power is with us. His, his, him being born is proof our God is with us. See? Uh, okay. I know. Those are titles. Those are not names. Those what are is titles. the real name? Because I've so these dudes not even on the same accord. He had to check them. Look, nigga, those are titles. Studied it. Y'all don't know what. Those are titles. Give me that revelation. Okay, so the real name because it's in the Bible. I ain't trying to go off for Jesus is Yahweh Shah. It's in the Bible. Now we have one guest joining us. Also is Aretha that's joining. See, <laughs> you seen old boy? All right, to the to the far. Uh, Right, you know that look he gave. He was through. We have one guest joining us. I'll look at him. Oh, I fucked up. He's looking in the camera now. They were gonna go to Revelation, which I'm pretty sure 
because I've seen I, I I know how they get down and I've seen their argument. They're going to go here to Revelation 19 around 12. See, this is where they're going to go. Now, we just saw that his father and his mother gave the, the, the angel gave instructions to his father, and his mother to call what to call him when he was born. Right. Right. He had a name given. Revelation 19 and 12 is where these individuals are going to go. His eyes were as the flame of fire, speaking of Yahweh Shai, and on his head were many crowns, because he's going to take down many nations, many kings. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he had a vesture, of, he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name was called the Word of God. So here his name is the Word of God. Here is a name that nobody knows. What does this mean? He had a name written that no man knew but he himself. Then they'll go to where it says new name, which is refreshed. We already broke all of that down. Okay, what was the name that no man knew but he himself? That word name, first of all, means what? A noma. Okay, proper names. The name is used for everything which one covers, everything. The thought or feeling of which is aroused and by the mind by mentioning Okay, there's many Michael Jacksons, but when you say Michael Jackson, which Michael Jackson are you going to think of? There's many Michael Jordans, all right? Uh, you, you say uh, uh, Michael Jordan, who who most people going to think of? Well, when you say Yahweh Shai, okay, you think of the one who's going to come to save us, okay? So it deals with Everything, the thought or feeling of which is aroused in the mind or mentioning, hearing, remembering the name for I.E. one's rank, authority, interest, pleasure, command, excellencies, deeds. OK, and his rank is above all of the angels. All right. No man would save us. He's the only one. All right. That can know that rank, that can fulfill what is written. As a matter of fact. That's what that means. That ain't saying he didn't know his name. Clearly, when he was on the scene, were not people calling him by his name? Did not he tell Paul his name in Hebrew? Let's go to Hebrews 1. Hebrews. One and two. And now in these final days, he has spoken to us through his son. I'm reading the NLT. Right. He's speaking to us through his son. Who sends down the Holy Spirit from the right hand side. God promised everything to the son as an inheritance. And through the son, he created the universe. <laughs> yeah. The son radiates God's own glory and expresses the very character of God. And he sustains everything by the power of his command. When he had cleansed us from our sins, he sat down in the place of honor at the right hand of the majestic God in heaven. No other angel could fulfill that. No, no, no man, no, nobody could do that but he. All right, that rank is only given unto him. He's the only one that can know that. He's the only one that knows what it feels like. Or looks like to be at the right hand. What it means. What it, the, the, full, the fullness of it. He's the one that's going to save us from our sins. Although other angels under him have their authority. He is the one in which is going to be fulfilled in. That is the angel and representative of the most high God, Yahweh. That's the one who delivered us out of Egypt. The angel who delivered us out of Egypt is Yahweh Shai. See? This shows that the son is far greater than the angels, just as God gave, uh, just as the name God gave him is greater than their names. See? <laughs> yep, uh, the, the, you got uh, Gabriel, Gabriella, uh, you know, warrior of the most high. You have Michael, Micah Allah, he who was like the most high. All right, Rapa Allah, all right, heal, healing of the most high. 
okay? And uh, there's a, let's see, uh, Uriel, all right, the light of the power, okay? A war Allah. So you, you, uh, you, you have Uriel, Raphael, uh, Michael, you see? So those are the four archangels, right? Yahweh Shah's name, he is the savior, is greater than their names. More importantly, his rank is greater than their rank. Okay? Raphael, Uriel, all right, uh, uh, Gabriel, all right, and Michael, okay? Those are the four archangels, right? For God never said to any angel what he said to Yahweh Shai, you are my son, today I have become your father. God also said, I will be his father and he will be my son. And when he brought his supreme son into the world, God said, let all of the angels worship him. All right, but you got groups talking about they won't worship him. Anyway, verse eight, but to the son, he says, your throne, O God, endures forever. You you rule with the scepter of justice. So all everything's gonna happen through him. That's what that means. He has a name written that no man knew but he himself. Or they'll go to the one where it says, uh, I'm gonna write up on him my new name. The name new means refreshed. See? New Jerusalem. We're gonna be refreshed. We're gonna be brought back to our former glory. But anyway, I just wanted to tap into the the the, the name. You know, clearly when the Messiah came on the scene, he was given a name, all right? And they hardcore call his name Jesus, but we, we just broke it down. These are Hebrews. This was originally written in Hebrew. It was just translated into this language. And we know, pursuant to the book of the prologue to Sirach, things lose their power when they're translated into another language. So us, the teacher, we have to go into the Hebrew to break these things down to our people so that they can have the understanding. He's called by the name Jesus the whole time he's on the scene. Okay? I mean, when people were calling his name, you mean to tell me? Let's see here. John 18 and 33, then Pilate entered into a judgment hall again and called Jesus and said unto him, Are thou the king of the Jews? So he called him by his name and asked him a question. Acts 4 and 18, and they called them and commanded them not to speak nor to teach in the name of Jesus. That was Yahweh Shai. Acts 5 and 40, and, and to him they agreed. When they called the apostles and beaten them, they commanded them that they should not speak in the name of Yahweh Shai and let them go. But again, we see it says Jesus, but we just broke down that that's not even a name. Okay, that, uh, really, that's a transliteration. The English Jesus is a transliteration. There's a difference between a translation and a transliteration. Look it up. The English Jesus is a transliteration of the Greek Iosis and translation of the Hebrew Bible into ancient Greek Eusis, all right, was used to represent the Hebrew, all right, slash Aramaic name Yeshua, all right, a derivation, uh, derivation of the earlier Hebrew Yehoshua or Joshua, which both mean Yah saves, all right, and we just showed you, I mean, he is the savior. He is salvation, man. So what in the hell is these dudes talking about, man? Huh? This dude knew, this dude right here knew he messed up. Yeah, one guest joining us also is. He knew he messed up. He knew it. He was through. So hopefully I will edify on to the next. Shalom.